This is Brook Drum from PrinterBot, and I have the box, the base, all put together with all the screws. So, I did that kind of off camera. Just wanted you to see. Maybe a little close, not a focus, but uh, I bundled up my wires. We're going to deal with wires later. So, everything lines up real nice. So there you go. And I am facing the front. This is the front. This is the back. And we're going to do as much as we can here very quickly. So first things, while I'm thinking about it, is we got some vinyl tube. And this vinyl tube is going to go on the outside of the shaft. You don't want it to extend beyond the top of the shaft. Yet you don't want it to hit the bottom of uh, the the motor, so it won't doesn't you don't want it to drag. So you may have to trim this vinyl piece. Um, so I just get a pair of kitchen shears out and trim that piece off. Now it's just going to press on there. It's perfect. This could be a little smaller. So just trim that down until you're comfortable when I've just flushed it with the top here and that's going to work well for my Z couplers that I will do here in a minute. Uh, the next thing is I, I need to put my pulley, my belt pulley on here. And uh, it's always a good idea to pre-drill this out. So I'm going to do that, but first I'm going to show you how I press these in. So we've got our M3 nut and it's very different smaller it's not a 632 nut you might even have a hex nut um, you know square and hex 632 nuts are interchangeable I don't even have an example here of a 632 hex but that is an M3 so Make sure you have the right one, and one good thing to do is just test it on this M3 8 millimeter long. That's perfect. So what I do is I get it in there. It doesn't go in all the way. I get a pair of channel locks out. Believe me, this can be very difficult. This is the best way to do it. So I've just pressed it in, and now now the hole is perfectly lining up. Um, if you wanted to clean out the top a little bit, it tends to be a little flat on the top. And I'm going to make sure it's going straight in. And these are the ones that people tend to over tighten once they get it on the shaft. So I do not want you to over tighten it. I like to poke mine all the way through to see that it clears and then I back it off. And real quickly you can see I've got a, uh, a hand drill and it's marked 5 millimeter because this is exactly 5 millimeter and actually um, just in case you're interested uh, let's see, that's inch. It's a caliper, good tool. Measure across here. That's showing 4.87 millimeters. So it's a little small, which is good. I don't want to drill it out too much. But you can see this is a good fit. <clears throat> so it should go on there really, really well. And some of you are going to want to flat this motor on one side. Um, it is the only way to ensure that this thing doesn't there it goes this thing doesn't strip oh, I'm putting it on backwards I actually like to put this on upside down there we go so for now I'm gonna leave this um, fairly loose I may choose to went down a little bit too far. There we go. Now it's flush with the top, see? And I may choose to uh, adjust that height later, but for now I'm just going to
tighten it. You don't want to over tighten. All right. You know what's funny? I over tightened just a little bit there. I heard a little crack. All right. So, um, by the way, if you do have a uh, a nut that you, I mean, a pulley that you've over tightened, basically uh, take it off, um, pour some super glue in the crack, and just pinch it together and you should be good to go and then as soon as your printer gets up and running print yourself another one alright so this is pretty straightforward too we got our I call this the belt pulley guide the Y belt pulley guide goes on pretty easy and it's gonna go like this I'm gonna want I think I'm going to want two washers under there. Yeah. There. And these are the long M3 screws. These are, looks like, 20, 20 millimeter. And they just barely reach they reach. I want my uh, washer to seat in there properly. There. Now these spin freely. Uh, oh, that washer's off. That's why it's not spinning freely. There we go. That should spin. Okay. All right, now we're going to set this aside just for a moment. Uh, we'll get to our belts here in a second, but I thought I'd show you how to deal with the heater board. So, this is your thermistor. It's going to go about right here on the board, and we're going to zip tie. So, the first thing you want to do is cover your thermistor so it doesn't short out on anything. And you don't have to use Kapton tape, but if you have it, use it. We're just going to keep it nice and simple here. And you may want to tape it down a little better. Some people like to put insulation on the bottom of their board. Um, I've even got some uh, radiant barrier that I put under here sometimes. Uh, I did on one of my bots. Seemed to make it a little more efficient, reflecting the heat upward. Now, um, this just came through here. We can zip tie here, but I want to show you. So, there's four holes that will align with these four holes, and you can print right on top of that with Kapton tape on the top of it. If you're using PLA, you can use blue tape. Uh, you can get capped on tape or polyimide or polyimide um, tape on Amazon. You'll be able to get it in our store eventually. But the only bummer about these um, bolts is, you know, they have heads sticking up. They're not countersunk. They're the only thing. 632 bolts won't work. Only M3 are small enough, and they let's see, tighten it too much. There it goes. So they stick up a little bit. So you got to be careful that you don't run your nozzle right into it. Extruder tip, hot end, whatever.
Okay.